UK house prices might finally be starting to crumble. Asking prices dropped by 1.9% last month, and the Halifax Index showed its biggest monthly fall for a long time. But still, this doesn't seem like enough. Since the start of the pandemic, house prices went up by 24%, when they were meant to fall by 13%, showing you what forecasters know about anything. And since then, they've only come back down by 5% or so. But there's more to this than what goes up must come down. The biggest determinant of house prices isn't supply and demand, it's the cost and availability of finance. So with the average mortgage rate spiking after a 15-year decline, house prices really should be falling, and by a lot. So is a bigger crash finally starting to get underway? Well, there are some arguments against, and I'll come to those in a minute. But first, there are three reasons to believe that it might be. The first is that, as I said, these August numbers are the biggest declines that we've seen in a long time. And it could just be the start of sellers getting real. Denial is strong when it comes to house prices. And if someone's home was worth more yesterday, even if only on paper, they become very unwilling to accept a penny less than that today. But now it's clear that this increase in interest rates isn't just a blip. Rates are going to stay high for a lot longer. Maybe sellers are now starting to get real. The second reason is the possibility of job losses. So the UK has surprised everyone by avoiding recession. But recession is just a technical term for two quarters of GDP falling. In reality, it doesn't really matter if it falls a bit or rises a bit. Just because we technically haven't fallen into recession doesn't mean that everything's humming along brilliantly and we're definitely going to avoid job losses. And if people do start losing their jobs, then you're going to start seeing forced sellers, which is going to put a lot of pressure downwards on house prices. And the third reason is probably the most persuasive which is that the majority of the impact of higher mortgage rates hasn't fed through yet. So according to one estimate, two thirds of this impact is yet to be felt because households are still on lower fixed rate deals and haven't been forced yet to refinance at higher deals. As they do, of course, they might struggle to meet those new payments, forcing them to put their property on the market. We're back to forced sellers, which puts downward pressure on house prices. But it's not guaranteed to happen. This could just be a much more modest fall. Indeed, Deutsche Bank believe we're only gonna see a 7% decline from peak to trough, and that would put us more than halfway there now. But bear in mind what I said earlier about people making predictions. There are though four arguments in support of that view. But quickly before we get into those, if you're not yet signed up to our free weekly newsletter, Property Pulse, put that right, the link is in the description below. So the first of those reasons isn't to say that we're not going to see a much bigger fall in prices, but that it might be restricted to certain areas. And if you look at data from Zoopla about house price growth over the last 12 months, you'll see a really clear pattern. The south of the country has fallen, everywhere else has risen. And this makes sense. Areas where affordability is already the most stretched that are most likely to fall. And these are also the areas where house prices are the most expensive already. Therefore, as mortgage rates go up, there's gonna be a really big impact. So everyone talks about a UK house price crash, but that doesn't really matter to you. What matters is what happens where you are. And that could be very different depending on whether you're in the South or elsewhere. The second reason is that there's a lot of demand out there still. People really want to own homes, in large part probably because the rental market is such a mess at the moment. And there's a lot of money out there still. It just happens to be mostly with older generations. And that's why nearly half of property purchases are going to be supported by family members this year. This is, of course, massively unfair because it means whether a young person is able to buy a house is going to be determined by if they've been lucky about who their parents are, but that's the reality of it. And just as there's demand from individuals to buy, there's demand from banks to lend. They're still keen to do business. This isn't a 2008 situation where lenders are scared and withdrawing from the market. In fact, they're pulling all kinds of tricks to try to make mortgages affordable at current levels. One way of doing this is the longer the mortgage term, the further you're spreading out repayments, which means that each individual monthly payment can be lower. And that's why traditionally mortgage terms have been around 25 years, but the proportion of mortgages being taken out for 30 years or longer has more than doubled over the last few years. And then we come back to that point about forced sellers. You only truly get a collapse in property prices if people are forced to sell. And that comes down to a few different things. One of them is jobs, as we've seen. Another one is how many people actually have mortgages. A far higher proportion of homes are mortgage-free compared to 2008. And for those where rates do significantly go up, can they afford it? And maybe they can. Obviously, for individuals, it varies. But on balance, the UK still has a big pile of excess savings from the pandemic. 
more than anywhere else in the G10 except Canada, which means that households might be able to withstand higher mortgage payments for longer so they don't become forced sellers and house prices stay up. I think these are valid arguments on both sides, but actually I think they might all be missing the point. And when you look at this a different way, a very significant property crash could actually be well underway. So watch this video next to find out what I mean by that and how it could affect you.